So microaggressions are the brief and commonplace verbal, behavioral, and environmental dignities that are directed towards marginalized people. They often happen in a very subtle, covert way, often at the um, sort of subconscious level of awareness from both the person who's enacting it and also the receiver. Right? The receiver might feel that something is wrong or something is funky in this interaction, might not even be able to pinpoint what it is, but they know something is wrong, the antenna go up. Um, they're often unintentional, right? And so this idea between, uh, that this uh, intention idea is important to kind of tease apart. Um, a lot of folks will respond whenever they are called out for committing a microaggression that I didn't intend that. Mm -hmm. And that kind of absolves them then of the harm that was created. And so with the microaggression framework, we focus more on the harm as opposed to the intention. And I like using the analogy of, of, the, of, of, of the law and how the law, there are laws for unintentional acts of violence, right? We call that manslaughter, manslaughter right. right? But in the bias world, there aren't really any rules or laws that protect these unintentional acts of bias, right? So I think it's important that we kind of tease that apart and we sort of steer away from having an intention conversation and more having an impact conversation. I think that microaggressions in some ways and research kind of bears this out are more difficult to deal with because they're subtle. Mm -hmm. And so the, the recipient of that has to kind of think through for a minute, what did you say? You know, was that an insult? Um, and not always being sure. And again, that takes more mental energy to, to do that. I was in a situation once where um, I was lost and I was trying to get through a community and I kept making stops to ask for directions. And people would not open their doors. They mm. rolled up their windows. And this went on for about an hour. So I finally mm. got to the place I was trying to go to. And I, and I had called them and said before, I'm really lost. I'm just trying to get to my destination. And so um, they said, well, ask for directions. And I said, I have. But people keep not responding or kind of blocking me out. And the person said to me, oh, that wouldn't happen in Northern Virginia. So I said to her, when I, when I get there, if I get there today, I will be the angry black woman who will be angry with you because you're negating my experience. Mm -hmm. And I think that happens a lot with microaggressions is that mm -hmm. people can easily, as you said earlier, with, the, with denying with the intention. And the story I have about that is I used to have a dog was, who was incontinent and she would urinate all over my floor. And she didn't mean to do that, but my floor was still ruined. Right. <laughs> so, right. so I think the intention is not the issue. And also mm -hmm. you need to ask the person who um, is the recipient of that microaggression, how they they get to define whether or not it was harmful, not the person yes. who, who perpetrated it, because it's the person who's marginalized. Exactly. It's their experience. Exactly.